Hello and welcome to your brand and enterprise show, Kaleidoscope, right here on Channels Television. Well, it's great to have you join us again on the program. I'm Anne Mwawadu. Today on Kaleidoscope, we're set with the Deputy Group Managing Director of Meristem Securities Limited, Sulaiman Adedokun, to discuss the activities of the organization, its contribution to the nation's economy, and of course its impact through its corporate social responsibility projects. Once again, welcome to Kaleidoscope. Mary Stem Securities Limited is a financial services provider that caters for individuals and corporations in Nigeria and across the world. But let's tell you more about this brand. Mary Stem Securities Limited is a capital market conglomerate that provides a plethora of distinct financial services through a range of products in wealth management, stockbroking, family office, financial advisory, trusteeship, registrars and probates management services, investment banking, lease and loans. With these offerings, Meristem has continued to fulfill its promise of wealth creation, preservation and transfer to all her clients. Meristem has consistently created value and innovation within the capital market space. In 2018, the Nigerian Stock Exchange awarded Meristem as the best digital broker of the year. In the same year, Meristem became the first Nigerian asset management firm to become compliant with the Global Investment Performance Standards by the CFA Institute. Still in 2018, Meristem received two nominations from Business Day, the Best Money Market and Equity Fund, among other awards. For 20 years, Meristem has innovated, grown and attained the status of the preferred financial services provider for individuals, corporations in Nigeria and across the world through a rich history of excellent customer service, demonstrated financial services expertise, combined with an enviable workplace culture of thoroughbred professionals. Let's find out from the Deputy Group Managing Director of Meristem Securities Limited, Sulaiman Adedoku, as he takes us through the history, the challenges, activities of Meristem, and of course the plans for the future. Let me begin by congratulating you on your 20th anniversary. I mean, your vision has always been to be a distinct and preferred financial service provider in Nigeria. When you compare the journey from when you started till now, how would you describe the journey so far for your organization? Thank you very much. Uh, I believe the journey has been exciting, challenging, and rewarding, given the growth achieved over the years and also the opportunities it presented. Uh, you know, we started as a stock brokerage firm in 2003 from a small uh, house in a uh, Robado Road, Ikoyi, and uh, we started with just about 100 million shareholders fund, six staff, ably led by the current group marine director, Mr. Warrior Begunde, who was given the responsibility by the founding fathers and owners to transform their dreams and aspirations into the reality of the company we have today. Uh, within the first one year, we have about 100 clients and the asset under management was about 2.4 billion. Today, we have grown, I must say. I can imagine. Today, we have a medicine that has become like a holding company, having seven subsidiaries. We have Meristem Stockbrokers Limited, buying and selling of shares. We have Meristem Capital Limited. We have Meristem Registrars and Probate Services Limited. We have Meristem Wealth Management Limited. We have Meristem Trustee Limited in charge of private trust. We also have Meristem Finance Limited, providing finances for investors. And with the last baby of the house, we have Meristem Family Office. So we have actually grown. And uh, today also we have almost about 5.4 billion shareholders funds. Our clientele base have grown to about 40,000. If you discount the 1.6 million we have with the registrars and shareholders. And also, in the same vein, if you look at the land that we have achieved, uh, we are the first firm to provide online trading through our Meritrade program. And we're also the first firm 
in West Africa to actually claim compliance to the global investment performance standard. Uh, this is just a standard whereby investors compare performance across board. Uh, and office-wise, you know, from those from that small house we started from, we have offices in Yaba today. We have in branches in Port Harcourt. We have in Abuja, and we have this beautiful edifice to our head office, uh, to the glory of God, and also to the support of our clients and all the stakeholders and our staff, past and present. So it has been a journey. Day. From all you've said, I mean, it's obvious you have grown. But talking about the impact you have made so far on the people, because as you grow, people are supposed to grow with you too. So what areas have you been able to do something or impact on when it comes to corporate social responsibility initiatives? Uh, thank you very much. Uh, in terms of corporate social responsibility, I think we have focused as an organization on talent development. Uh, you know, we've been providing scholarship to universities, the best performing student, well graduate student in universities. And in addition to that, we have also uh, focused on promoting financial literacy and investment programs in the universities, for youth especially. Uh, we do this through gamification investment processes. We want people to be able to learn how to invest, not just, I mean, knowing it, we want them to practice it so that when they have money, they can actually do investment. Uh, in addition to that, uh, we sponsored makes them open. This is a professional uh, golf development store whereby we encourage local golfers, I mean, talented golfers, who have the potential but who have no sponsors. So, makes them pioneer the sponsorship of these people through the collaboration of some of our, our corporate uh, uh, friends. And so, I think this is one that area we have uh, performed in terms of corporate social responsibility. And uh, recently, we brought about a program, we call it Medicine orientation for rising entrepreneurs. This is to actually promote entrepreneurship and investment activities among the youth. And the objective that when people are very aware of investment and they know much about entrepreneurship, then it will promote growth. And this is our focus in terms of corporate social responsibilities. So how have you been able to contribute significantly to the nation's economy through your services? Uh, through our services as a financial service uh, firm, I believe one of the areas is the, our performing our corporate I mean, responsibility as an organization, and that is paying our tax promptly. We pay our tax, and we don't, uh, we don't default on that because we are a responsible organization. Aside from that, I think we have also contributed to the reduction in the unemployment rate in the country. I mean, from a staff strength of six, that we, that we started with in 2003. Today we have over 330 staff within the entire maritime group, and I think that is huge. Uh, aside from that, talent development is one of the ways we have contributed to the national economy. You know, annually we train a minimum of 30 analysts that don't actually stay with us after the training. You have a number of them going to the financial industry and other industry, other sector within the nation. So we believe that that is empowering and training uh, these graduates will make them employable and will make them better uh, to be able to contribute to the nation economy. And in addition, you know, we are also very active in terms of SME. You know, uh, SME is the engine, economic engine of growth for any nation. When they fail, the nation fails. So as, a, as an organization, we provide financial advice services to this SME. I mean, taking them on the journey of how did they grow and how would they not fail. So this has been our own responsibility as, as, as a company. And uh, in addition, in line with that, you know, the family-owned businesses is a critical part of the economy. What we have done, because given the statistics that only 3% of family-owned businesses make it to the fourth generation, as a company, we have provided services in line of in the area of succession planning to these family owned businesses because we believe that if the if the family do not fail family owned businesses are still existing uh, then they can continue to contribute we have a report that over over 50 percent of contribution to the gdp they are made by the company of any of the world even of the world they are made by the family owned businesses so we want to be part of the process we don't want them to fail 
So we provide services along this line. And we've been doing this for the past uh, eight years, having a number of family-owned businesses contributing to their growth, ensuring that they do not fail, providing structure, providing processes in a way that help them to grow. So this is one of the areas that we have contributed to the national economy. And lastly, we, part, we, we, we invest in government infrastructure, infrastructure development of the country. You know, one of the challenges we have as a country is infrastructure. And you know, firms like us need to be active through the private public participation. So we have done that, we have been investing in some of these projects of the government to ensure that I mean, they are able to meet up with the requirement to serve the nation. I know you cater for different categories of people with several services that you provide, but do you have a particular package, something that provides opportunities for small and medium scale enterprises in the country? Uh, yes, I mean, as I said earlier, small and medium sized enterprises in the COP, I mean, they are a very important part of the economy. And one of the packages we have for them, first, we help them raise capital, capital raising. It's one of the programs we have for the SME uh, because many of them, they lack finances. They need to finance their growth. And to finance the growth, it's mostly challenges for most of the SME. And what we have done as an organization through our uh, subsidiary, Medicine Capital Limited, is to help these uh, SMEs to raise funds from investors uh, for the purpose of growing their businesses. And I think that's one of the key areas we have functioned towards helping the SME. As a, as a service. Another area is providing financial advice services. You know, as I said earlier, so these SMEs, they need to be a package to make them investable, to make investment in them uh, uh, viable. So many investors, they want to particip part part participate in companies and SMEs that have growth potentials. Some SMEs may actually have growth potentials and challenges will be how do you optimize, how do you capture the growth potential? So as a firm, we provide financial advisory services along that line. And uh, the last one is uh, on financing, financing some of the things that the SME want to really uh, pursue. Maybe they want to work in capital finance or they have vehicles to transport their products. And so we provide financing for them through one of our subsidiary as Medicine Finance Limited. I think this, these are the key areas we I mean, we, we, we provide services to the uh, SMEs. We have more for you, but that's just in a moment when we return. Please stay with us. Welcome back. You're still watching Kaleidoscope on Channels Television. Let's continue the conversation now with the Deputy Group Managing Director of Mary Stem Securities Limited, Suleiman Adedokun. In a country where people are very afraid to invest, I mean, how do you build investors' confidence and manage your clients to achieve the desired results? Investors' confidence needs to come from trust. If I trust your ability to perform, then I will have confidence in you. So I think that is, this is where uh, trust is very, very important. Uh, people want to invest. They want they want client or advisor to manage their investment in a way that reflects their wishes. And uh, for us as an organization, we have paid attention significantly to this area. Uh, from our philosophy, from our mission as an organization, it resonates. Because we believe that when you are able to provide transparency, provide information, operate in a transparent manner, and also bring them in into the process of that investment. Let them know that you actually, then the first thing that you must be genuinely interested in these investors. When they know that you have genuine interest in them, in their growth, you also, they also know that you're operating with a sense of transparency, then investors' in confidence will grow. And that is what we do. Our mission is to bond with our clients, to understand and meet their need through knowledge, information, and dedication of our group while satisfying all stakeholders and the environment in which we operate. And you know, everything we do as a firm is like, it's based on the philosophy. What's our philosophy? Our philosophy is guided by our belief that our client's success depend entirely on our, our success depend entirely to the extent to which our clients succeed. We put ourselves in the place of our clients and serve them the way we serve ourselves. We believe that if we serve them, and if they grow, 
then we have succeeded. But if, we f if they fail, we have also failed as an organization. So for us, we are connected to our client and we provide our services along that line. And this for many, we believe that if you do all this one, our clients will have more confidence in us. We don't want to sell products to our client for the purpose of selling products. We don't want to sell anything to our client. We don't want to just make money from our client. We want them to grow. And when clients see you do all this, they have confidence in you. It's not about how much you want to make from the client. We want to be their partner. We want to be their growth partner. We, want, we are sincerely interested in them because they are the ones that have helped us up to this moment in time. So, you know, for you to be in business continuously, you must have deep interest in your client. And that deep interest brings about trust. They also rely on your ability to perform. How do you, how do you manage the investment? Do you define the objective they want to achieve and we manage investment according to this objective? And I think this is very important for us as an organization. So when investment are managed, when client has trust in you because of your ability to perform, because you are people that, can, that are knowledgeable enough and professional, and your dealings and operations are up to international standard, then people have trust and they have confidence in you. And with that, you can also manage their investment according to what the goals and objectives they want to achieve. It's, this is a very important part of our, of our, of our industry. And you know, when this is solid, when, when the fundamental is there, when people trust the system, then people can continue to invest. And so for us as an organization, we are very, very focused on this area. And we work towards developing it, not only for ourselves as a firm, also for the industry. Because when there is investor confidence in the industry, then the entire industry grows. So it's not just about own growth alone as, a, as, a, as an organization. It's about the industry growth, which we believe can be leveraged on with investors confidence with the competitive investment markets in the country you still remain one of the biggest players in this sector what have you been doing differently and how have you been able to remain at, on the top uh, thank you very much uh, I think what we have been doing differently is to stay focused on our vision as an organization uh, our vision is to be distinct to be the distinct and preferred financial service provider and we stay true to that cause uh, we have put in place culture that will drive that and our value system to also support that. Our, we leave the theme of our culture as a client-centric, high-performance organization driven by the zest of its people. Uh, we believe that focusing on clients make you, will make you to be different always. And so we have a, one of our key values, core values, is client crazy. That is the government of the client, by the client and for the client. We do this, we pay attention significantly to this. We want clients to have in an unparalleled experience with us. And I think that has served us well, and it has made us to be different. In addition to that, professionalism and integrity is key in operation. When we deal with our colleagues, when we deal with the market, when we deal with the client, we've never forgotten that we need to be professional, and we also maintain our integrity, even at a cost to us. We have had instances in the past that we are, I mean, we, we, are, we incur costs just in our attempt to maintain our integrity. And also, we, we are not a selfish organization. What, we, what I mean by that, we want value for all the stakeholders. We want a win-win situation for all the people we deal with. And I think that's another part that has, separate, I mean, that has set us apart. In addition, we also, uh, we, one of the things we have also done is to ensure that uh, as an organization we maintain international standard. We don't want to benchmark ourselves to local operation. We want to operate according to international standard so that by opening our game, we'll be one of the best. And I think that has given us that differentiation. So one of the reasons we claim global investment performance standard because we want to operate according to international standard. In the same way, we have also, I mean, we have certification, ISO certification. We have ISO 27001 certification, which is the highest global standard on information uh, protection and security. Because we are, we are dealing with clients, we need to ensure that their information are well protected. So these are the areas that I believe that and we, we work on that maybe can give us that kind of that difference in the industry.
in a sector like yours, I mean, I know it's not all been rosy. Uh, there's sometimes you face challenges also, maybe by government policies due to some other problems. What are these uh, uh, problems you have faced in the past and how have you been able to manage them? Uh, well, there are a lot of policies that uh, come from government and how you respond to those policies. I think they are very, very important. Uh, you know, when uh, police from CBN, from the Central Bank, uh, police from, uh, from other sectors that affect our clients, that also affect us, what we do mostly as an organization is that we look at these policies and we look at it to what extent does this affect our client and does it affect us. And we try to engage our clients. There are policies from our regulators that we know that we impact negatively on our clients. We was, we are, because again, you know, there was this question about, about investor convenience. There are some of the policies that actually can erode investor convenience. Yes, and by the time you are adding more costs to a client, what you are doing is to make investment, I mean, to, have, to, to make them not be interested in investment activities. So we are be able to manage client by engagement. There are some tax policies in the past that affect the client. We want them to pay some higher tax on their investment activities and they want to withdraw from investing. And um, by withdrawing from investing, you are not having the pool of the fund you need to use to invest in other projects. And I think so, these are the, for, for us as an organization, we've managed this by engagement. And also, sometimes we engage the operate, I mean, the regulators with some of these policies because we believe in proper engagement with regulators, we'll be able to do well, we can have, we can, we can come with a compromise in a way that promotes the industry. What value will you be bringing to the table going forward? I mean, taking a look at the future in a few years to come, in terms of your business growth and, of course, your value that you'll be adding to society and probably more initiatives when it comes to corporate social responsibility? Uh, in terms of value, the, the next few years, in the future, for us, we want to stay close to our clients and provide for them on parallel customer experience because we know that is key. And in addition to that, we want to provide innovative products and service offerings in a way that add value to them. You know, we want to be there, we want to be there for them. We want to move, shift from the share of wallet for our client to the share of their life. Why do I mean? So let's be strategic partners. Let's be able to add value more to their operations, to the way of life. So we are shifting more. We are not just focused on the wallet, but let's see about value. How do we impact on them and our client? And also, what we'll be doing more of impact investing and green investing. Because these are the areas that will impact on the society and also promote the value, I mean promote the society or develop the society. So these are the areas we'll be calling more. And I told you that we, 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 we have been working on uh, this maritime orientation for rising entrepreneurs. We'll continue to do that because the focus of that is how to promote investment and entrepreneurship. So we we'll work more on that, uh, on that area. So, uh, Leverage on technology is, is a given because for any company to survive this, uh, this, uh, this unpredictable environment, you must be able to be very I mean, uh, good at technology. Your operation has to be, uh, has to be digital in a way that connects to the, your client that has actually gone digital in different ways. So we want to remain, I mean, we remain uh, relevant to, the, to, to, to those clients. That, and there are, we believe there are other opportunities within the sectors because the economy the economy is a developing economy. And in a developing economy, you have a lot of opportunities in private sector, in private investment area. So we'll be playing heavy in those areas for the purpose of adding value to the economy and also adding value to ourselves. And lastly, we want to also live to the meaning of our name, Meristem. You know, Meristem is that tissue of the plant that is responsible for growth. It makes the growth to grow deeper it makes the stem to go wider and make the shoots to reach higher. So we want to grow bigger than this. We want our client to also grow bigger than this. We want to also go deeper in terms of how do we connect more to them? How do we add more value to them? So anytime you hear medicine, in the next future, it's about growth. It's about partnership. It's about the value. 
And that's it on Kaleidoscope for today. Thank you so much for watching, but you know it's never the end because you can always go to youtube.com forward slash channels web, click on playlists, then go to Kaleidoscope and watch past editions there. I definitely will see you very soon again. I'm Anne Mwawadu. Thank you for watching.